And there are two ways in defeating shaitan. If you can remember, the first is what? Seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-iyyadu billahi min shaitan rajim And we also mentioned that the second path, Al-Akharun, they mention that At-Tariq uh, al-Mujahada, the sacred struggle against his whispers, against his temptations. wal qiyama alayhi and to stand firm against him by pushing him away by refuting him and by opposing him and Imam Ghazali expounds upon this and he mentions that the best ways of defeating shaitan is by gathering these two weapons together the first weapon is the shelter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we can use our wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon few. We use our intellect, we use our sacred struggle, and aid and assistance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives for sacred struggle. For divine help is from Allah azza wa jalla jalla jalla. May Allah give us tawfiq. Hmm? And I mentioned also that a, 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 a typical example of this is the kuffar. Sallatallahu alayna. Allah has set the disbelievers upon us. Although it is within his power, it is within his qudra that his ability is to prevent their mischief. He has the ability to prevent their mischief and their wickedness. But he sets them out upon us to test us. Who are those who are the witnesses of La ilaha illallah? Who are those who are steadfast? Who are those who will pass the imtihan? Who are those who will pass the test? And who are, the, who are those who will endure jihad fi sabili, the sacred struggle in his path? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We alternate among the people so that Allah may make evident those who believe and may take from among them, you, from, from among you all witnesses to the truth, to the haqq. Also, how do we get to Jannah? Is it easy to get to Jannah? SubhanAllah, it's not. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, a couple of verses after this ayah, Am hasibatum, do you think, an tadkhulul jannata, that you will enter Jannah? Walamma ya'lam illahu alladhina jahadu minkum. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not made evident those of you who struggle and those of you who persevere. If you wish to enter Jannah, you will be tested. Alif Lam Mim, Surah Al Ankabut. Ahasib an nasu an yuturaku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Do you think that those who say we believe in Allah, an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun, and that they will not be tested? You're going to be tested. So if you feel that we ended our last session upon these notes, if you feel as though you are making ta'awud, you are praying your salah five times a day, and you are making ta'awud, you are immersed in the shelter of his protection, Azza wa Jal Jalla Jalalu, but yet you see that shaitan yataghallab alayk, you see that he is be, continuing to be triumphant over you, and there is no hope, there's a no hope situation, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed this to happen. Because who is the, who is the dog's master? The dog's master is Allah Azza wa Jalla Jalalu. He unleashes his, not his, I won't say his dog, but he unleashes this dog to whomsoever he wishes. But you know what protects the individual from the bites of shaitan? You see, you have a barking dog and you have a wild dog. A barking dog, he's just there to bark. Shaitan. That's the whispering. But then you have a wild dog. Where the dog, not only does the dog bark, I'm using this metaphorically here, try and understand. Not only does the dog bark, but the dog also bites. But wallahi al my dear brothers, the remedy, the source of um, protection against the dog's bite is your sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you lack in sincerity to Allah azza wa jal jalla jalalu, the dog will bite. And it will not just bite once, but it will bite twice and it will continue to bite until he has destroyed your Iman completely. How many times have you been to Mayyits? 
You've been to Janaza processions. Just before when the guy or the, the brother or the sister is breathing his last breath. So we're going to be speaking about this in detail. Maut, Sakratul Maut. How many times have you seen a brother breathe his last and he couldn't even utter La ilaha illallah? He couldn't even utter La ilaha illallah. He had time to say it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow him to say it. Hmm? So these are all examples. So if you wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you from this dog, shaitan, and he's hearing me. <laughs> he's hearing me. And he's, he's very, very observant with you guys right now because you're getting to learn about him. And he doesn't like that. Hmm? Similarize Satan to that of a thief. You wait for him. You know his cunning wiles and his deceptions and his tricks. He doesn't like that. So if you wish that he doesn't bite you, he will bark at every one of us. But if you wish that he doesn't bite you, then you need to increase yourself in sincerity. That everything that you do, we do it for Allah Azza wa Jal Jalla Jalalu. Because Allah clearly states this in the Quran. You know, ثُمَّ I will come to them in front of them, behind them, from their right and from their left. You will not find many of your servants thankful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr, إِلَّا عِبَادِيَ الْمُخْلَصُونَ Accept my servants purified of my grace. My servants who are sincere, you, لَيْسَ لَكَ عَلَيْهِمْ سلطان. You will not have any authority over my sincere servants. So when you see that he's being triumphant, know that he is only barking and, not, and he hasn't bitten you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a way out. Again, every time when I speak, ayahs of the Qur'an come to me. We see in Surah Al-Talaq, when I said, Allah will always appoint a way out for you. This is the Dhunnoon um, al-Misri, Rahmatullahi alayhi, one of the famous Gnostics and ascetics this deen has ever seen. Dhunnoon al-Misri, Rahmatullahi alayhi. He mentions that this ayah is the 1000 dinar ayah. He mentions that this ayah is the most expensive ayah in the Qur'an. Surah Al-Talaq. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ Whomsoever fears Allah, if you fear God the way he must be feared, يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا He will always appoint a way out for you. You will always find ways out of messes or out of grave situations where your deen is being threatened. He will always find a way. He will always open up paths. If one path is closed, two paths will open. And you will keep on multiplying these paths until everything will be made clear for you. Everything will be handed to you. First class delivery, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for him from means he has no expectation. Rosy sustenance comes to you without any, any struggle on your behalf. This is why it's called the 1000 dinar ayah for those who understand it, truly understand it. And whomsoever um, trusts Allah and relies upon Allah for all his affairs, Allah becomes sufficient for him. He doesn't need anyone. Allah is his is, his, is, is the one that suffices for him. Allah will always be sufficient for him. Subhanallah, may Allah give us tawfiq. Hmm? So, he, so you know, Jannah is not easy. You need to struggle for it. You need to persevere, as Allah says in the Quran. Okay, we move on. How about wait, fighting him, conquering shaitan? How do we fight him and how do we conquer him? There's three ways. You've got to know three things before you try to fight him and to conquer him. Three things you have to understand. The first thing that you have to know is that you need to get to know his plans. You got to know his cunning wiles. You have to know his cunning wiles, plans. And you need to familiarize yourselves with his uh, devices, his trickery devices that he will set in your path. If you don't know his plans and his devices, then how can you wage war against him? How can you conquer him? Because if you know his strategies, if you know his cunning wiles, then Allahu Akbar, 
shaitan will not dare to abuse you. He wouldn't even dare to abuse you. Hmm? The second thing is that whenever you feel that you are being invited to sharr, you've got a bad idea in your mind. And you know somewhat is from shaitan. Inshallah in the coming weeks you'll get to know the, his ideas. You get a bad idea, what should you do? The second thing that you have to do to conquer him and fight him is that you need to scorn his invitations. Nowadays we don't see scorning among our brothers and sisters. We see acceptive. They're very, they're always acceptive of his invitations. One of the biggest diseases to hit our hearts today as a Muslim community and Muslim communities as a whole is that we've become people who have been blinded by shaitan himself. Why? He makes our deeds seem very beautiful to us. I.e. he's got a hold of your desires and when you act upon those deeds you feel as if you are rightly guided because of your nafs. But it's not. You are not following the injunctions. You have not weighed that idea with the Sharia. We're going to be talking about this. Have you weighed that idea with the Sharia? Does your Sharia permit this? Does the Sunnah, does it confirm with the Sunnah of our Prophet Habib Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You cannot find it in the Quran, you cannot find it in the Sunnah, so where do you find it? We've, we look towards whether it was a practice among the Salaf al -Saliheen. If you still are confused about this idea, then this confusion comes from who? Allah? Allahu Akbar, no. Kalla. Innahu min shaytan is from shaytan. We don't have this attitude when we look at ideas. We just feel, yeah, it's okay. Allah knows my heart. How many times have you heard it from brothers and sisters? Allah knows my heart. Allah knows what my intentions are. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, Sharif, Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum. Allah doesn't look at your bodies. Wala ila suwarikum. He doesn't look at your appearances. Wala kinnahu innama yanzuru ila qulubikum. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He looks at your hearts. Yes, that's very true. The words of the Prophet are so true. But the hadith doesn't stop there. It doesn't mean that Allah knows my heart, my heart is clean. I don't have to pray. I'll dress inappropriately to weddings. I will spend lavishly on weddings, which are amusements and tools of shaitan, by the way. You know, we have so many weddings, these, what do you call it, these desi weddings? Where it's just, the expense is just ridiculous. This is from Shaitan al rajim This is not recorded in the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have engagements, we have Mehendis, Chautaris, which, are, which were Hindu uh, traditions, not of a Muslim tradition, which is completely contrary to the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zayyana lahum shaytan amalahum. No, it's good. People get together, we give them food. We invite our families, it's Mahendi. This is a unique example of that, that shaitan, he's made your deeds seem so beautiful. I'm quoting from the Quran. And they think that they're rightly guided. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have transgressed from the path and they are not rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Hmm? So you've got to get to know his plans and his strategies. And you've got to scorn his invita invitation. And you should not attach your heart to his call, his invitation, nor should you follow it. Because he, uh, here it is, because he is like a barking dog. If you go to the dog, he will develop a fondness for you. But if you turn it away, it will remain silent. The third thing that you must try and and understand and you must implement in your life if you want to be safe from his attacks, his deceptions, is you need to subsist and tadima dhikr Allah ta'ala. You need to subsist in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us here, mashaAllah, mashaAllah, may Allah give us all tawfiq. How many of us read after Fajr? What do we do after Fajr? Is it just wake up and then just uh, jump in our beds and fall asleep. What is from the Sunnah? What have we learned from the Sunnah? You know that how, how much ibtihalats there are? 
how many utterance, sacred utterances there are that we have to read after, after, after Fajr and after Maghrib? How much is there from the Sunnah that it was among his practice, alayhi salatu wa taslim, that he would recite every single day and he was the most perfect of men and he was the best of all creation? قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Three times. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Three times. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Three times. And it goes on and it goes on. Seeking refuge in Allah from shaitan. Keeping the fortress, the gates, the, the castle. The castle's gates of his heart closed. So that shaitan is kept out. How many of us do this? How many of us are aware of these blessed invocations? and utterances and um, recitals from the Qur'an. How many of us are aware? If we were to read what was from the Sunnah, what is from the Sunnah after Fajr, you are protected till Maghrib. This is proven from the Sahih. If you read what is from the Sunnah that we have to read after Maghrib, you will be protected until you sleep. If you were to implement the Sunnah before you sleep, for example, I'll give you just a small example. Allahumma iqidni fi ahabil amala ilayk. After you have, read, you have read the four quls and you have blown upon your hands and you've rubbed it over your body three times. This is from the sunnah, by the way. And you read, you raise your hands on your bed and you say, Ya Rabb, iqidni fi ahabil amala ilayk. Oh Allah, wake me up at the time you wish to wake me up. And what is the time Allah wishes to wake you up? You've gone through that mujahada, you've gone through that struggle. You've done your wudu just, just like the wudu you do for your salah. Just for the love of Rasulullah wasallam, And you've retired to bed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what hour would he wish to wake you up brothers? If he loves you and he has singled you out among thousands, 10,000 people, he will wake you up for tahajjud. You will be your own self alarm clock. If he wishes not, and he has mercy upon you, he will wake you up for Salat al-Fajr. How many of us do this? How many of us read, read before we sleep? So the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hates it. He can't stand it. He really can't hear the name of Allah. When I say hate, I mean hate to the maximum degree. Here it is, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Always keep the dhikr in your heart, on your tongue. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and this hadith is uh, Imam Jalaluddin al suyuti has brought this hadith in his Jami as Hmm? This hadith is Qala, Qala al-Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Inna dhikr Allahi fi jambi shaytani kal akala Fi jambi ibn Adam. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Listen to this. Listen to this. Indeed, the remembrance of Allah in, at the side of shaitan, at the side of shaitan, is like gangrene is to the son of Adam. What is gangrene? Gangrene is the, is the rotting and the decomposing of bodily tissue when you are alive. Due to a block of circulation, your feet or your hand starts to rot in front of your eyes. You become a walking corpse. Na'udhu Billah, may Allah protect us. Imagine you had a leg. Na'udhu Billah. Na'udhu Billah, may Allah, may Allah protect us. Al-Iyadhu Billah. Imagine your leg was rotting in front of you. And, we've rot and when it rots, it <coughs> begins to... The smell is uh, um, repugnant. The, s the smell is offensive. It's repugnant. What would you want with that leg? You would go to the doctor and say, cut off my leg. Just like gangrene is to us, the dhikr of Allah is to shaitan. He can't stand it. You know, Imam Ghazali says that if you have a bad idea, you know, shaitan always comes to you when you're alone. He's even more harder upon a person. If you wish to know whether the idea is from shaitan or from your nafs, we're going to be going through it, inshaAllah. <coughs> Then read the names of Allah. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar al-Mutakabbir al-Khaliq al-Bari al-
Musawwir al Ghaffar al Qahar al Wahab al Razak al Fatah al Alim, etc., etc. All the way. You start to read his names. Wallahi al Azim, the idea will be out of your head. If that happens, then know that that idea was from Shaytan. But if that idea is persist, it persists and it's always in your mind, then know for a fact that that shaitan does not come, that, that, that idea, that, that notion doesn't come from shaitan, but it's coming from your desires. Allah's put that there to test you. May Allah give us tawfiq. So there it is, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be constant in his dhikr. Now we ask the question, how do we know his cunning wiles? What are his cunning wiles? And how do we get to know about his wiles? There's two things here. You have to understand that there are two things here. You have to understand that shaitan, he has in his power whispered temptations. We've all um, read about it or even learnt about it from our fathers and our mothers when we were kids. What do we say? Waswas, yes? Waswas. Shaitan, we were always told when we were kids that shaitan, he starts to whisper in your ear. But you know what? That isn't the whole truth. It's not all about shaitan. Because our Prophet Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, listen to this hadith. This is in Muslim, fi Sahihi, recorded by Imam Muslim. Mi anna abdillahi bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala an. You could say one of the first faqees of this ummah in which Hanafi fiqh is, has great relations with Ibn Ab, um, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. Listen to what he says. Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ma minkum min ahadin illa wa qad wukila bihi qarinuhu min al jinn. <laughs> Did you know this? Listen to this. Subhanallah. That there is not one of you. There is no one, sorry. There is no one except that he has a companion from among the evil jinns with him. Everyone has a qareen. Everyone has a qareen. Just don't get scared now, especially for my youngsters. What is good? You're going to read more Quran than before you sleep. <laughs> huh? But he says here, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَقَدْ وُكِلَ بِهِ قَرِينُ Except that he has a qareen entrusted to him from among the jinn. So they said, they said, Qalu, wa iyaka ya Rasulullah. And do you also have an evil jinn with you, ya Rasulullah? This is in Sahih al Muslim. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, wa iyai. And I also have that with me. But listen, illa anna Allah a'ani alayh. Except that Allah, He assists me against Him. Allah assists me against this evil jinn. فَأَسْلَمَ And now, that evil jinn has become Muslim. Say Subhanallah. <laughs> that evil jinn has become Muslim. أَسْلَمَ He has submitted to the haqq. فَلَا يَأْمُرُنِي And he does not command me except to do good now. Ah, Subhanallah. Are we like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَا بِاللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Subhanallah. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what has He done? Azza wa Jal. He has entrusted to our hearts, to the Ibn Adam, to the heart of the Ibn Adam, an angel. And this angel calls you, it always invites you to do good. Have you ever just been sitting down and all of a sudden you just want to go to the masjid this is from ilham this is from mulhim this is from your angelic inspirer but sometimes if you get an idea and this idea is fully resolved you're fully determined then know that that good idea is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but sometimes you get the idea i'm going to go to the masjid you just talk to yourself but you fail to go to the masjid know that that idea was from your angelic inspirer Okay, so you have an angel on your heart, entrusted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, upon your heart. يُقَالُ له الملهم. Then its name, the name of this angel is called Mulhim. Mulhim. Meem, Lam, Ha, Meem. And Wallahi al-Azim, whenever you pray your salah, 
When you say Assalamu Alaikum, I've read this in the book of uh, um, um, Abstinence, Kitab Zuhud, by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal al Shaybani, Rahmatullahi Alayhi. I've read it in his book that when we say Assalam, always include in your niyyah mulhim. You know, we read in fiqh that when you say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah to your right, you have in your intention that you give salams to kiram and then you give salams to the musalliyeen and to the imam if he is on your right and to the jinn and to the and to the sisters and then to the jinnat and to all the all the children on your right but it's recorded in the book that when you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah please always include your angelic inspirer send salams upon him send salams upon him Every time when we have an idea, don't think that the idea originates from our minds. No, it's all in our hearts. We feel it. We feel it in our hearts. And this, this mulhim, wali da'awatihi, and his invitation, ilham. His invitation is called inspiration. Inspiration. وَسَلَّطَ فِي مُقَابِلَتِهِ And in confrontation to mulhim, Allah has entrusted upon your heart also a shaitan, a devil. It's in your heart. He will always invite the slave to evil. And this devil is called Waswas. Waswas. Walidawatihi and his invitation is Waswasa. So it's not really shaitan that's doing the waswasa, it's the devil inside you. It's the devil inside you. Because Shaitan al rajim he takes a back pedal. He's on the back foot. He's sitting there, Fariq, at leisure. He lets you get on with it. He leaves you to your desires. If your desires, if you oppose your desires, that's when Shaitan comes in the frame of the picture. That's where Shaitan comes in. You have to understand this. So Mulhim, he doesn't ask you, he doesn't inspire you to do anything but good. Anything, always something good from him. And the, the waswas, the devil, he doesn't tell you to do anything except bad. According to the majority of the scholars. Now we'll end it, we'll end this session on this note. That it's been, it's been hukia, um, it's been said, okay? Um, that the Shaykh of Imam Ghazali, Sayyiduna Abu al-Warraq, Rahmatullahi alayhi wa qaddasallahu ruha, he mentions that shaitan, shaitan can also call you to do good. He can always call you to do something, something of a good idea. Walakin, qasduhu, qasdahu, his goals, his purpose for that evil is, is evil. You think it's good. But in the end, it will destroy your Iman. What does he do? How many times have we seen this? يَدْعُوكَ إِلَى الْمَفْضُولِ وَيَمْنَعُكَ مِنَ الْفَاضِلِ عَنِ الْفَاضِلِ He causes you to do those things which have the inferior merit. Do the smaller things. To prevent you from doing things that consists of superior merits. I'll give you one example. One example. You're chilling out with your friends. You're chilling out with your friends, you're having a discussion. And all of a sudden, it's reached the time of tahajjud. What time? Tahajjud. This is a clear example. There are many other examples, you can think about it yourself for the whole week. So, Mulhim, do your tahajjud, akhi. So you go and do your wudu. You're awake, you haven't slept, yeah? Do your wudu, akhi. So you get up, you do your wudu, and you pray your 10 rakats of tahajjud. Then Mulhim pushes you a bit further. He goes, do an extra two. So you do an extra two. By the time you finish tahajjud, your eyes are bloodshot. You look like a zombie. You're completely knackered. You're extremely exhausted. And you look at your time. What time is it? 3.30, just an hour left till Subuh As-Sadiq. 
and you're there in your musalla waiting, waiting for Fajr and you fall asleep and you miss Fajr completely. This is a prime example of Tahajjud. Shaitan himself told you to do Tahajjud. Because why? He's told you to do the inferior merit, to neglect the superior merit. And Wallahi al if you gather up the whole 12 rakats of Tahajjud, it is nothing compared to the two Sunnah of Fajr. Nothing compared to the two Sunnah of Fajr, my dear brother. This is a clear cut example of how Shaitan lures you towards the inferior merits rather than to the fadil, rather than to the superior merits. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. If there, if there are any questions, I have said, don't hesitate to come and ask me. If my sisters, um, we're trying our best to accommodate for our sisters as much as we can. I hope you are, if you can leave some feedback as well. If there's anything that you need, inshallah, please do let us know. Please uh, ask the management committee also, inshallah, we will provide facilities. If our sisters um, need any questions answered, Please do, inshallah, write them on a piece of paper and hand them in to some other brothers in which they will come to me, inshallah. We'll end it with a dhikr, inshallah.